Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell, and I figured, you know what, let's go ahead and just conclude all my collection videos. I'm recording all these back to back today. It's my one day off this week, so I figured let's just do it, get them all done now, and I'll upload these, you know, throughout the next, like, you know, I don't know when you'll see this, probably like in a week or two. Um, but uh, I want to talk about Ghost Rider 2099, because outside of Dan Ketch, this Ghost Rider really appeals to me, and I don't know... I, I know what it is. There's kind of like a cyberpunk thing to it. And in the you know, the 90s when this was coming out, I was starting to get into cyberpunk type stuff. There wasn't a ton of it out there. So to see it in kind of a mainstream Marvel comic was pretty neat. This started around the midway point of, you know, the, the Dan Ketch run. Like I think it was around issue like maybe in its 40s or 50s. I can't remember or maybe a little bit earlier. I, this was not an original 2099 title. When the year 2099 comics started, I think it was like Spider-Man, Punisher, Ravage, and Doctor Doom, I think were the four main titles. Then after like a year or two, the X-Men got introduced. And then after that, they got a Ghost Rider introduced. So he came in around 1994, I think, and lasted about two years. He ended in May of 1996, I think it was. And, uh, and so, yeah, I just liked the design. This book also introduced me to a lot of interesting artists that I became fans of afterwards. Like, um, I think Kyle, well, Kyle Hotz, I already knew about a little bit, but uh, I think Ashley Wood may have done some work on this book as well. So, yeah, there's just some neat stuff, really great people that came together to make this book happen. And it's, like I said, it's very different from the, you know, the supernatural side of Ghost Rider. This is more technology based. Uh, basically, in the future, there's a town called Transverse City. And the way it's re described later is that it's a city always on the move. It's like a, basically just a series of highways that connect what used to be Detroit and what used to be Chicago. Because in the future, like all that kind of changes. So it's, it's these just all this road between those two cities where they are now. So you can just imagine just miles and miles and miles upon miles of just open road and roads that intertwine and, you know, highways that go over each other and under each other. And it's this complicated system of, um, of freeways to where as long as you're moving on them, as if you're guilty of something, uh, as long as you're moving on these freeways, you're fine. You can't be arrested. But the second you stop or run out of gas or whatever it is, which you will eventually, uh, you know, uh, but I think, it, and these are more of the modern stuff that they added on, like uh, what they did recently. So I'm, I'm kind of regurgitating some of the, the more modern stuff, but the more modern stuff I kind of liked. I, I liked the, the, the version of Transverse City. I liked that there was people who had to come up and like fill your car with gas, <laughs> you know, like while you're driving, if you're wanted and you had to give them some of your money. So there was also that it's like, all right, I, you know, I, I'll be free as long as I stay on this highway, but I got to keep paying people to pump my car for a gas while I'm driving uh, or whatever. They don't really use gas gas, you know, but it's like whatever their fuel is in the future. So it's, it's pretty neat. Um, so this version is about Kenshihiro uh, Cochran, who is a, a guy they just call Zero, and he's a hacker. And his dad works for a company called the Demonics Company, right? D slash M-O-N-I-X, Demonics. <laughs> so there's still like uh, hints at like supernatural stuff going on. But mainly it's uh, this kid, he's a hacker, and as he's, he gets shot, and you find out later his dad was kind of involved in his death indirectly, and he didn't mean to, but it just, it happened. So as he's dying and he starts realizing who, you know, who's the, to blame for all this, he downloads his mind into a robot body. And that robot, as he awakens, becomes the Ghost Rider. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, like I said, it's not that he makes a deal with the devil, at least not in the original version, but you'll see as we get to Breeson's book. And yeah, I have two copies of number one. So that's why I'm moving two copies. One of them has like this big cut down the middle. And this other one is is all whole. So yeah, so I was like, all right, I got to. Yeah, it's just a bad cut. I don't know if someone was maybe cutting open a box of these back in the 90s and split it right down the face. Um, so yeah, I have the entire run of this book. There's 25 issues. And like I said, Zero is the main character. His head does go on fire, but it's, you know, it's a little different type of, of fl I don't think it's an actual flame flame. I think it's, I don't know if it's a hologram or I can't remember the full details of it. I love the font though. Uh, looks really cool. And they put the 2099 logo in there, but, uh, but he does ride a motorcycle. It, it's kind of, he's kind of like a Judge Dredd looking motorcycle, but it's really cool. In the future, uh, Dr. Doom is president. So I think he kind of, 
most of the motorcycles that are run by police kind of have this uh, Judge Dredd kind of look to it. Um, so I think he commandeers one of those and, and retrofits it into something for more for his means. But look at this, dollar fifty for these books, man. What a steal. So yeah, have issue three, he's got zero spray painted on it. Um, issue four, the werewolf. You get it because it's software <laughs> version. Although the face looks really creepy there. That's weird looking, yeah. Um, you killed me, why? So that's him confronting his father about it. So what I liked about this is it kind of had a crow vibe to it. You know, it was like, oh, someone killed someone and, the, and they come back from the dead. Not really in this case. He, he's dead, his body, you know, uh, Zero's body is dead. So he does not transform back into a human. He always looks like Ghost Rider. I thought that was another cool thing too because it reminded me of Spawn too. But but like I said, it has like crow vibes where he's come back for revenge. Um and the life he had, where he was a hacker, he was part of an activist group that were trying to, you know, take from the rich, you know, and not really give to the poor, but give to the people, I guess is kind of how they phrased it. And he was kind of a Robin Hood type of, for hackers. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was neat. It blended a lot of neat concepts together. And I always liked Zero for that. Um, so obviously he interacted with Spider-Man. Spider-Man shows up and they battle in issue seven. Um, but then, yeah, like, so I got issue eight here. Some of these covers are just so amazing. Like they just, they're beautiful. Like I said, Kyle Hotz, there's a lot of great artists that came in and took over. This is the best copy of issue nine I could find. I, to me, I don't really care about condition as long as I can get the entire run. I also, I think you can notice they fixed the the font. So instead of Ghost Rider being two, like separate, like top to bottom over each other, like the, the Dan Ketch one, they decided to streamline it and just make it one. So, uh, yeah, pretty neat. And they kept the font the same. They just made it side by side. Um, but I like that because it covers less of the artwork, you know, so it, it's good to do that too sometimes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just seeing a lot of these artists like Kyle and Ashley Wood and stuff was just so cool. Like I said, it, 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 Kyle I already kind of knew about. He did, And he even did Crow stuff um, as well around this time. He was doing, like, a... Uh, stuff for the crow sequel like or the dead time or whatever it was so he did some of the i can't remember if he was the artist on dead time or not but he did some of the artists some of the crow comic books and so i always associate him with the crow and then obviously carnage as well because he did those two carnage one shots but so when he did this i that helped me get the crow vibe and again they went back to the other font i mean the other type of logo there and then they go back to this one again so it's like it's weird they they go back and forth, but I, I prefer it this way. It just covers less of the artwork for the cover. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty awesome. And yeah, he's got a chainsaw arm, which is great. And we'll talk a little bit about that with the Ed Breeson version coming up too, but look at that CGI, <laughs> like 90 CGI cover with like uh, uh, computer boards or whatever uh, next to it with the chips. It's just so funny. It's awesome. Um, yeah, so... Here we go. The new head of the USA. We got this is where Doctor Doom becomes president. Uh, so that it becomes 2099 AD after Doom. I love that. So cool. Um, and you have Doctor Doom as the, the leader, uh, the president of the United States now. And so here's his motorcycle. It's got the the you know Doom logo injected. Um, so yeah. So now he's got a new role to play. Now that there's a president, uh, Doom. And here we got Ashley Wood art. I love Ashley Wood stuff. It's very different. It's very unique. Um, and it's not always, I don't always love it. Like if you're looking at it anatomically, it, you're kind of like, oh, well, you know, like certain things are too big or, you know, like like there's like a giant pouch there on her leg. It just, just would weigh someone down big time. The knives are just kind of placed on there. Like some of it seems haphazard, but that's all part of the style, I think, of Ashley's stuff. And that's what I like about Ashley's, Ashley's work is that it just it it stands out it's different like look at this version of it's like Judge Dredd but now now you know uh, Ghost Rider's kind of working for Doom so it's like he's like a law enforcement Dredd type <laughs> person uh, he's got his badge there and stuff but uh, but look at that drawing it's just so it's kind of abstract in some areas and it's pretty neat uh, this one uh, this is a good one too I, this is not an Ashley Wood I don't think but it's a nice cover maybe it is I can't no I don't think so someone else i think but yeah so issue 17 issue 18 here issue 19 the coming of l cypher so there is some storylines we never got wrapped up in this run that was the bummer of it ending um i'm actually surprised it lasted 25 issues i don't know how well it sold 
but I, it sold well enough to get to 25 issues. But they, they never really come up with a solid ending. I mean, like, you kind of say goodbye to Zero at the end. He, I think he um, gives up his life or his existence as Ghost Rider to, to basically become the internet. I think that's kind of how it happens. Like, he, he, you know, ingrains himself into the communication network that people use to, like, interact with online. So it's kind of like the internet. And he becomes it. So that's kind of his new form is he's like lawnmower man or something like he just he kind of becomes the Internet um, and he takes down his father. But I think there's still the demonics company still out there and there's a couple other threads. Some villains never got their their origins or, or anything revealed. So there's that. Um, so, yeah, we've issued 21 here. But for the most part, you got kind of an ending to his story, but not really like it wasn't a clean ending. So I think that's why they did another book after this called um, 2099 World of Tomorrow. I think they hint at Ghost Rider in those books, but they never really show him at all. So then they did a book called Manifest Destiny, which I think Zero had a part in, but I can't remember. And I can't remember if his body was discarded or found by the Demonics Company. I can't, it was something along those lines, because there's some ideas out there that were unpublished stories that they released out there. So I'm get, I might be getting them confused. But as you can see, they got a different logo as they were nearing the end of the book. Uh, they, they made it a little bit cleaner. They took out some of the the um the 8 bit kind of 16 bit look of the the font um but yeah again Ashley Wood just this crazy artwork look at that that's such a weird cover it's so cool oops um in the path of the cyclone get it and look at that look at that eye doesn't that remind you of no um yeah <laughs> red spiral it's pretty cool um this one i found at Coliseum of Comics recently uh, cuz it was one of the ones i was missing i was missing like Three, or ish, three issues from this run, and then I went to Coliseum of Comics and they had all three of them. And I was like, sweet, I can complete it and make this video. So I just bought that issue like two weeks ago. And then the big size double finale, double size finale. So uh, this is where it kind of ends. This again, got at Coliseum, it was $10. So yep, I had to complete that run. So yeah, I think it was those two issues and then like issue 12 or 17, I think those were the other two. So it was like four random issues I was missing. Uh, but I could never find this anywhere for less than like 30 bucks. And then I went to Coliseum and had one for ten dollars. I was like, sold, man, sold. And they give back issue dollars there. So when you buy new comics or new items, you earn back issue dollars, which is pretty cool. And so I had like four back issue bucks, and I put it towards this in issue um, twenty-four. So I was able to get them. So like I said, you at the end of this, you kind of get the ending of zero a little bit. But then he does go on. I think in Manifest Destiny has a, a part to play in that book. But then they did a book called Timelines, and I'll try to put a cover to one of the issues here. And I think that was Zero, Cochran, in that one, too. And the 2099 universe actually comes back to the 2009 universe. I think Brian Reed was the writer of this book, and it was four issue series and then two one-shots, one about the X-Men and one about, uh, about Spider-Man. And it was basically like Spider-Man leading the charge with the Dark Avengers even. I think Venom even appears, so maybe it's something I have to do on the Venom vlog at some point. I'll have to reread that book. Um, I think I have the digital version of it somewhere, uh, di digital version of it uh, on my Comixology. Um, but uh, I think there was, it was four issues and there was a ghostwriter that showed up from the year 2099 and Punisher, which is Jake Gallows. So they both show up and I think it was Zero. Even though he doesn't look like Zero, he looks more like a ghostwriter. He doesn't look like a digital ghostwriter, but I'm pretty sure he fights Iron Man in issue four and, and calls himself Zero. So. so then that we had that version of him and then he disappeared for a long time. So did the world of 2099. But every once in a while, Marvel brings it back. And as you guys know, in December of 2019, they because it was like, oh, 80 years from now is going to be 2099. And 80 years ago, Marvel started. So they were like, this is the perfect midpoint to tell a 2099 story. So they brought back the original font, which I loved. They did that. Uh, they didn't They put the 2099 logo over there, though. But I love that they brought back the original font. That's so cool. And it once again is Zero Cochran, but this is a completely re redone origin of him. Uh, he does get killed with his friends. He's a hacker. He's trying to hack into a, the you know the mainframe or whatever it is like you know the the company Demonics runs. His dad is involved, and then he you know Zero gets killed. So this is a retelling of his origin, which is new features. What they did, what they added here, was that when Zero dies, he actually does go to hell, but hell in the future has evolved. I guess because whatever Ed Breeson had planned maybe for the current Ghost Rider book. Uh, Johnny Blaze was king of hell, obviously, and you know he was trying to prevent Lilith be from becoming queen of hell because if she did, she would unite the multiverse of hells or whatever. So 
in this version in the future johnny blaze is still king of hell but he's a it's a digital version of hell so hell has like i said it's evolved under the guidance of johnny blaze and also the guidance of technology and what people believe in so even johnny says you know there are people that still believe in how the old hell is and then there are people that believe this digital version is hell so since you believe that that's how i'm showing up to you kid i'm johnny blaze and it's cool because Johnny Blaze shows up and he's got the iron piece over his eye. Let's open this book up like he did in the 90s, the Dern Dan Ketch run. So I thought that was kind of cool that uh, Breeson and his artist did that. Damien uh, Cusiera here, uh, Cusiero. Um, you have, there's Zero going through what is hell. And then Johnny Blaze shows up. And you can see he's got the iron piece over his eye, much like the 90s version. Which kind of makes sense because he's kind of a digital version. So it's like, all right, show the cyborg version of... Johnny Blaze. So he shows up as the King of Hell and he makes a deal with um, Zero to bring him back as the Ghost Rider. So that's different in this one. In the original comic, Zero didn't make a deal with anybody, I don't think. He just kind of came back as a Ghost Rider. But in this one, he makes a deal with Johnny Blaze and Johnny even says, like, hey man, I'm a trust me, I'm I'm a better devil to deal with than the one I had to make a deal with at one point. And I thought that was kind of cool that Brees did that, where he was like, Johnny Blaze, like, hey, I made a deal with the devil once, kid. And I'm here as the devil now to make a deal with you, but I'm not going to screw you over on your deal. I'm going to tell you up front that you're going to be, you know, a machine and I can put your mind into the body of this machine um, that's like a skeleton. But uh, and it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be a best. It's not going to be a good life for you, but you'll at least get your revenge on your father and you'll become a spirit of vengeance. So Ed Breeson kind of rewrote the story of of zero Cochrane and uh but added the johnny blaze element which i i liked honestly i like both versions but zero is a neat character he's a cool neat tormented character he's trapped in this body that isn't his own so that adds some uniqueness to him that's a little different than some of the other ghost riders we've seen and uh who can transform back and forth you know zero can't and i thought that made him unique and i liked his story i thought it was cool the cyberpunk future of ghost rider was really cool. So if you guys are into that, you know, please check it out. Unfortunately, none of these exist in trade. I think the timeline book does, but you, like I said, you don't get the cyberpunk version of them. And I think this Ed Breeson one shot you can buy in Comixology, this one back here, but the main book, you have to find it in physical form. There is no trade paperback collections. And as far as I know, none of these issues available digitally at all on Comixology. So the only way to find them is in print. Uh, but the, luckily for you, besides the final three issues, all these other issues you could probably find for a dollar. <laughs> so if you go through a dollar bin or you go on Mile High Comics or you go on eBay, you can probably find most of these issues for a dollar. Um, except for the final like three or four issues, you'll probably run into some problems there because, you know, like all comics in the 90s, when they stop printing hundreds of thousands of them and they only print like 10,000 of them, it's harder to find them nowadays. So, um, so they are more expensive for that reason. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of Zero down in the comments below. And if you like this version of Ghost Rider, or if not, we've talked about all the other versions now, except for the movie versions, which we'll talk about in the next and final episode of this show. So let me know what your favorite Ghost Rider is down in the comments below, whether it's Zero, whether it's anyone else, Alejandra, Robbie, doesn't matter who it is. Let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for supporting the show, guys. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me and I'm glad we were able to go through all these Ghost Rider books with you. So we will end this show properly with a look and discussion, brief discussion. I'm probably not going to go in depth, but we're going to talk about both Ghost Rider movies in the next and final episode of Highway to Hell. And this is not the final episode of Highway to Hell forever, though. Don't worry. We're going to bring the show back with season two, probably in September or October of this year. And we're going to start talking about Spawn and we'll do 25 episodes of Spawn so that way we can keep Highway to Hell going. So thank you guys so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace.